Kicking off the list at number 10, Dark Claw. Coming from the Amalgam universe, where DC and Marvel combine powers figuratively and literally, we get a Wolverine Batman double whammy. First appearing in Legends of the Dark Claw issue 1 back in 1996, at just age 5, young Logan Wayne witnessed the death of his parents, so now we have that Batman origin right off the bat to lay the foundation. Good stuff, always promising. And then Logan Wayne was sent to live with his uncle in Canada. But after poachers ambushed his home, we have even more family members biting the bullet. So far, so sad. Okay, so Logan Wayne enlisted then in the Royal Canadian Air Force and soon after the Weapon X program. This is all starting to sound a bit familiar, I bet. That's when the Wolverine origin comes in. Logan Wayne got the adamantium treatment, but it was a failure. In a way, kind of. Because Logan wasn't this mindless brute like he was in the comics. See, now he kept his sanity. So now we're starting to get more of a positive vibe, which is good for a good start of this list. Afterwards, he was a free man, so he studied criminology, forensics, gymnastics, martial arts, anything he could get his hands on, including the 127 major styles of combat. That mixed with the claws, Logan Wayne is somebody I'd never want to cross paths with, either as Batman or just Wolverine. Either way, I'm like, no, you guys are both gonna kill me. And before we continue on with this list, if you wanna go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, support our man Wolverine, he is Canadian, we are Canadian, only makes sense, really hit those thumbs up, you guys are the best. Let's get back to the list. Number nine, Wild Thing. For this one, we go over to the MC2 universe where Elektra married Wolverine and soon after came a child, of course. That daughter was named Rena Logan, and if that name doesn't ring a bell, she's also called Wild Thing. Marvel's MC2 imprint quickly gained momentum after What If, issue 105, which introduced us to a universe full of other super kids. Wild Thing's powers are very similar to her father's, obviously. I mean, even just by looking at her, you could probably make a guess who she's an offspring of. All that aggression, you're like, okay, it's definitely Wolverine. She also possesses the power of regenerative healing and super strength, but what makes her stand out really is the psychic claws. Instead of adamantium claws, she has minor psionic abilities that allow her to manifest her own claws, but if she focuses hard enough, if she really thinks, she can have claws, real life claws, like her father, and dish out physical damage too. Mental, physical, she's got you beat in both realms. Number eight, Hydra Wolverine. Hearing Cap say Hail Hydra in Endgame was a wild moment to witness in theaters. Steve using future knowledge to save the day instead of kicking everybody's ass in the elevator whilst tipping his hat to comic book fans, it was a nice moment, beautifully written in. In Exiles issue 92, we get to see Logan turn sides briefly as well. In this reality, Wolverine is a Hydra agent and the Invisible Woman is Madame Hydra. And to make things even more strange, they're both lovers. Yeah, this, this odd couple here alongside Slaymaster left their reality after fighting the Exiles and they tried to conquer the multiverse. Hydra Wolvie wasn't around too long for he was actually brutally taken out by the cat with his own claws in New Exiles issue 12. Number seven, Captain Logan. Coming from the noir series, Earth 90214, Jim Logan was a detective, much like our 616 Logan, his past was also troubled. His partner was his half-brother named Dog Logan, who has the brains of a bedbug and the manners of a gutter rat. And that's in his words, not mine. His origins are a little bit messy when it comes to the noir verse, because in X-Men Noir, Mark of Cain, Wolverine's origins are that of a bootlegger whose past is never really touched on. All we know is that he's a former lover of Jean Grey and that he was the one who took out Scott Summers' left eye. But here in Wolverine Noir, he's a detective with a gritty Catholic past. Either way, the noir versions of Wolverine is quite dark, and although his claws aren't built in this time around, he still has them as a weapon of choice. Real Freddy Krueger style, I like it. Number six, Weapon X. One of the more extreme versions of Wolverine, Weapon X came from the Age of Apocalypse storyline, and the first time we meet him is in X-Men Alpha issue one. Weapon X was a member of the X-Men, only this time around Magneto is running the team. How lovely is that, he's great. One of the most notable differences between this Logan and others is that Weapon X is missing a hand. He had battled Cyclops, and although he lost it in the fight, Logan can still use claws on that arm. Now in this reality, Wolverine, sorry, Weapon X, was married to Jean Grey. So a little light in this warped reality. Love still exists out there, it's true. He later on became Weapon Omega, AKA the hair to Apocalypse. So it's really not that great. There's love, but there's also evil stuff. Number five, Zombie Wolverine. We're just a day out from another episode of What If on Disney Plus and we're all so excited and I'll be honest, a little bit nervous because those zombie Avengers are still super powered and they're still on the way. Zombie Wolverine first appeared in Ultimate Fantastic Four issue 22. Now at the Xavier Institute, Wolverine and the X-Men were taken on a zombified Alpha Flight when Magneto came in to 
saved the day. He was part of the crew that went to fight off the remaining horde, but I did introduce him as Zombie Wolverine, so yes, he was sadly infected. Wolverine was bitten by Zombie Hawkeye and Zombie Cap, and after he turned into one himself, he defeated and then ate the Silver Surfer. An afternoon snack quickly gave Wolverine cosmic powers, quite the upgrade. It's a gory good time. If we had X-Men in the MCU right now, the zombie episodes would have been so much better, but we can't complain, it's still good stuff. Wolverine is a main character in the Marvel Zombies Dead Days and a minor antagonist in Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness. If you haven't read either, I recommend you read both of them. Read all the zombie comics. I shouldn't have to sell you on how cool zombie superhero comics are. You know? Number four, Mr. Murder Hands. There's a nickname, a rather fitting one, really. Logan from Earth-65 first appeared in Spider-Gwen Volume 2, Issue 20. He was a former Japanese samurai who was cursed by a witch. The curse was that you have to live on Earth for all the days that his targets, the people that he killed, would have. So he's going to see quite a few days, basically. His memory here is also erased, and it happens right after he joins the Weapon X program, where he's also given his trademark adamantium claws. When he later joins S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Black Ops team, his fellow operatives give him the nickname of Mr. Murder Hands. Nice. Oh, this is your teammate, Edward Murderhands. Yeah, make sure you sign in. Great. Break a like, team. Number three, Primal Wolverine. A side we don't get to see too often is Logan's animalistic side. Although maybe it's for the best. We don't want to see that. We don't want any of that smoke, really. Coming from the Mutant Next series back in 1998, we pick up with Wolverine, Sabretooth, and Wild Child, but this time around they're referred to as the Pack. Now in this story, Logan still goes crazy after Weapon X does their thing, but this time he's not alone. Sabretooth and Wild Child also endure these crazy experiments, each of them also going primal in the end. Now the three of them end up roaming the Canadian wilderness like an actual pack. But this pack is one you want to avoid. They end up going nuts by the end of the comic, like I said, but while they're in the wild, they did see other mutants and in turn they all work together for a hot moment to figure out what was happening in Weapon X. They have the right idea, but those animalistic impulses are just too powerful. Messy. Number two, Old Man Logan. Mark Miller's Old Man Logan begins in volume three of Wolverine on issue 66. And this is a future where supervillains have sadly won for the most part. Hulk and She-Hulk had kids, the Hulklings, who would beat the crap out of you if you didn't pay rent. So yeah, it's an odd future to say the least. Everybody has their own territory, so Logan now has to pay up for living in his. Hawkeye, who was much older and this time around he was blind, needed Logan's assistance to get across the country and deliver a secret package. This was a way Logan could get some of that rent money, so let's do it. Just talking about Logan paying rent money is a weird thing. When they get back from their trip, things have changed drastically. Now Hulk gang actually took out Logan's family because, you know, they were bored. And that's what people do when they're bored in this dark future. No more games, no more talking. Now it's time for Logan just to get payback. Simple as that. Alternate reality, same temper. Logan gets Banner, he gets him right through the chest, so naturally he hulks out. And then when Hulk eats Logan, you think that would for sure be the end of it, but that's when Logan pops out from inside Banner. Surprise, we're gonna throw up. And finally, number one. Old Man Venom. Coming from Edge of Venomverse, issue four, we see Logan get captured by Angel, who is Archangel in disguise, and Hulk Jr. This story played out differently than the Old Man Logan storyline because this Wolverine told Bruce Banner Jr. what happened to his father. Archangel took Logan to the danger room of the X-Mansion, and that's where he and Bruce Jr. just ambushed him. Wasn't very happy this time around, although the first one wasn't really happy in any way, I guess, either. Bruce Jr. had this idea that maybe if he kills Logan, he can then use his DNA and create symbiote hybrid clones, but what ended up happening was Logan fought a Venomsaurus Rex, that same T-Rex from the original Old Man Logan storyline. The same one we see chasing Hawkeye and Logan. So he fought it, got eaten by it, and then considering the fact that Logan was eaten by the Hulk and ripped his way out, we already know that this is gonna be much better. He comes out better than ever. The symbiote ends up bonding with Logan in the T-Rex tummy, giving us a pretty exciting extreme upgrade. He rips his way through the dinosaur and subsequently rips his way through his enemies. Number 10, Rancor. Rancor is the descendant of Wolverine who hails from the Earth of 691. She first appeared in the original Guardians of the Galaxy series in issue number eight. When she was just a teenager, she battled her own father and defeated him by clawing out his heart. Yikes. She then took over the planet Haven and decided to take prisoner the human population of that planet, turning them into her servants against their will. She would cross paths and play villain to the original Guardians of the Galaxy team initially, but they would end up defeating her, this time around at least. Her powers are similar to Wolverine's, being that she is his descendant. As a ruler, she also has other warriors at hand who are willing to fight for her, although she herself is also a capable and skilled 
fighter. Number 9, Albert. Albert was an android created to destroy the real Wolverine by Donald Pierce. He came from a kind of wacky time in comics and also worked with LCD, another android who resembled a little girl. Like I said, it was an interesting and strange time. In the end, both LCD and Albert would go rogue, deciding not to complete their mission as they developed their own free will and thought and decided that eh, they didn't want to die. In killing Wolverine, they likely would have been forced to self destruct, which they just were not into. Albert the android has powers very similar to Wolverine, though he doesn't self heal. But hey, he's an android, so he can be rebuilt or patched up in most cases if he's harmed. He also has the fighting prowess to almost match Wolverine of 616. Almost. And also possesses a genius level intellect. Supposedly. Number 8, Wolverine Earth 811. The Wolverine of Earth 811 is interesting as it has been implied that his powers, while similar to the version of Wolverine from Earth 616, could have actually just been a result of human evolution, with him potentially being a descendant of a small group of ancestors known as the Moon Clan, who hid when the Celestials first arrived at Earth, avoiding any of their genetic experimentation. Despite these potential origins, Wolverine was still considered a mutant when the Sentinels took over as he hails from the reality of Earth 811. And of course, Earth 811 is the reality of the Days of Future Past. He was the Wolverine to help Magneto rescue Scarlet Witch, but unfortunately she died during that attempt and Magneto ended up paralyzed from the waist down. Wolverine would go on to join the resistance and become a leader among them. So he not only brings with him his own abilities, but influence over the resistant forces located on his earth in his reality. Number 7, Jimmy Hudson. Jimmy is the son of Wolverine from the Ultimate Universe of Earth 1610. Though Jimmy wouldn't know he was Wolverine's son until his mutant powers manifested. His powers are similar to his dad's, but Jimmy is also bonded to one of the poisons, a kind of symbiotic alien creature that typically takes over their hosts. However, after their leader died, Jimmy found a way to control his poison. While bonded to his poison, Jimmy also has spider-like abilities and can shapeshift, turning his claws into tensile, goo-like tendrils or extremely elongated spikes. Whatever he prefers for the day. Number 6, X24. X24 was a clone of Logan made to defeat the old man version of him and recapture the clones who had escaped. He was powerful enough to take on both old man Logan and Laura Kinney at the same time. And Logan pretty much dies trying to fight him in the end, and X24 is even then only killed after X23 is forced to shoot him with an adamantium bullet that Wolverine was actually saving for himself to end his own life. X24 is one tough dude in this movie. He is a version of Logan whose rage is more tapped into and unleashed. What's more, he was engineered to be comparable to Logan in terms of his power level, but in peak physical condition. Considered to be like Wolverine, but as he was in his prime. Number 5, Gorgon. I always forget that Gorgon was also Wolverine, but him being one of Norman Osborn's dark recruits and carrying the mantle would definitely make him one of the most powerful alternate versions of Wolverine around. Because Gorgon is a pretty powerful and deadly guy. Even if, as we learned during the Otherworld tournament in Ten of Swords, he isn't immune to the seduction of rock sirens. Gorgon is a masterful fighter and a powerful mutant who also has the ability to turn his opponents to stone, hence his name. Gorgon. He is a deadly force to be reckoned with, and I personally feel bad for all of the folks who have to challenge him whenever he's working security for the mutants of Krakoa. A lot of those people just are getting maimed left, right, and center. Ugh. Number 4, Dokken. Dokken or Akihiro is a deadly member of the Wolverine family who spent his time as Wolverine when he was on the Dark Avengers. It was during this time that Dokken attempted to take the Muramasa blade for himself to boost his power. He planned on having it bonded to his skeleton and coating his claws in it, and he wanted it so he could basically go kill Romulus. Remember Romulus everyone? Whatever happened with that? He was successful in bonding the Muramasa blade to his claws, but didn't get to hold on to that power permanently. He would go on to battle and defeat both Scar and the Punisher, in fact seemingly killing Frank Castle, who would then go on to become Franken Castle for a time. One of Dawkins' most powerful abilities is his pheromone control, which can allow him to alter his opponent's mood. This is actually how he won against Scar, using pheromones to calm Scar down, which caused him to then transform and transform in a way where he was just more chill. Number 3, Laura Kinney. Despite not even being an exact clone of Logan, X23 is still one of the most powerful versions of Wolverine 
around out there. She became Wolverine in the all new Wolverine series. Even today, it's more the mantle and look that Laura is known for, with both her and Logan currently using the same name, Wolverine, on Krakoa. So there are two Wolverines technically within the same continuity now. More recently, Wolverine was chosen to go on a mission inside the vault, along with Darwin and the resurrected Sink. The three were brought in to do so because of their extraordinary abilities and the fact that Sink could, in effect, use both of their powers himself. As we saw in issues 18 and 19 of the 2019 X Men series, time moves differently in the vault. And in the end, the mission ended up taking, for them, hundreds of years before they actually managed to complete it and get out. But despite aging, Laura did not slow down. Even in the old woman Laura future, where her cells were beginning to break down due to her being created originally from genetic engineering, Laura still proved to be a badass, using her last bit of time alive to defeat Doom and free the people of Latveria. Basically all around, X-23 is just like the best. She's so cool. Number 2, Dark Claw. Dark Claw is a combination of Marvel's Wolverine and DC's Batman, hailing from the Amalgam Comics universe. So yeah, you know he's OP. He's not only got a powerful regenerative healing factor, but is a master fighter, martial artist, and detective who also happens to have super enhanced senses. Imagine a master detective who is also a master tracker. There is no crime or mystery that he could not solve. Dark Claw is also known for being hyper intelligent besides, so he's basically got the whole package. He's also super wealthy in this reality as well, so he's got money to back up his vigilante antics, helping him to acquire high level tech and giving him access to various different gadgets, as well as his own claw copter, which this character has in place of a Batmobile. If you're both Wolverine and Batman, does that mean you just have like unlimited plot armor? Because I feel like both of those characters can never die just because they're so popular. So I feel like Dark Claw would be pretty unstoppable. Number one, Old Man Phoenix. Obviously, one of the most powerful versions of Wolverine around has to be the one from the alternate future of King Thor, Earth 14412. Here, Wolverine goes on to become the Phoenix after seemingly dying along with everyone else on Earth at the hands of Loki. The Phoenix, however, chose him, and because of that, he lived again and was given an unimaginable amount of cosmic power. Logan mostly used this power to fend off villains, including Ultron and Loki, and to keep the Space Stone out of Loki's hands. Many years later, as Old Man Phoenix, he would team up with King Thor to protect the Earth from Doctor Doom after it was given new life again. Doom in this reality was also immensely powerful, and although Logan could not be killed in battle, he chose to sacrifice himself to give Thor the power to defeat Doom, imbuing his hammer Mjolnir with the Phoenix Force. However, even after seemingly giving up his life here, he would still somehow end up being resurrected because Phoenix. Number 10, Wolverine Earth X. No, not necessarily a dark Wolverine when it comes to tone. This Wolverine is dark because he's just kind of sad. Hailing from Earth 9997, this iteration of Logan has a pretty much identical backstory to that of his 616 counterpart, with the only difference being that Logan's ancestors were a group of pre-humans known as the Moon Clan. This means that instead of being a mutant, he is considered a pure breed human, and all of his powers are a part of his natural biology and not because of any mutations. Fast forward a couple of centuries and we see Logan get adopted by the Howlett family after their child dies, and they just kind of stumble upon him in the wild. The rest of his history seems to be the same though. Wondering why I'm saying this is a bit of a sadder Wolverine? Well, it's because he gets pretty lazy later on in his life after he finally marries Jean Grey and has kids. He lets himself go a little bit and grows a pretty impressive beer gun, and he and Jean turn into the cliche bickering married couple. Later in the story when the Skrull attacks New York, Wolverine refuses to aid Captain America and the other heroes in fighting, and Jean is so upset with the decision and the man that he's become that she leaves Logan and never really looks back. Check out this storyline for yourself starting with 1999's Earth X, number zero. Number 9, Dark Claw. One of the coolest looking hero matchups to come out of the Amalgam universe, in my opinion, is the hero known as Dark Claw, the combination of Batman and Wolverine named Logan Wayne. With a similar backstory to Batman, Wayne witnessed his parents murder at a young age and was then sent off to live with his uncle in Alberta. However, that didn't last very long either because his uncle was murdered as well, and Wayne was sent to live in a home run by nuns. When he was finally old enough, he left them and enlisted in the Royal Canadian Air Force alongside a man named Creed H. Quinn, and the two of them were submitted to the Weapon X Pro aka the Canadian Super Soldier Program. It was there that the Wolverine half of this hero came to be, as it was here he had learned of his metamutant powers and had his bones fused with adamantium. Quinn, however, was not so lucky because through the course of the experiments, he grew more and more insane and would eventually become the Hyena, a combination of Sabretooth and the Joker and Dark Claw's greatest enemy. Equipped with all the powers of Wolverine and the vast knowledge of Batman, Dark Claw is truly an awesome character, so check him out for yourself in his first appearance in 1996's Marvel vs. DC, 
Number three. Number eight, Wolverine the End. Well, this is a old man Logan, we're not talking about the old man Logan just yet. Logan of Earth 4011 again shared the same life as the 616 counterpart with a few differences here and there. One of the most prominent being that his brother John Howlett Jr. didn't actually die and was instead taken by the first Weapon X program because John also seemed to possess a healing factor and bone claws. However, he did eventually escape. Logan, however, was not so lucky. He was captured by the new Weapon X program a few years later and had his skeleton fused with adamantium. And from there, the rest of his history is pretty much similar to his mainstream counterpart. You know, joins the X-Men, has a bunch of kids, you know, the whole deal. Fast forward to the end of the 21st century and we get a glimpse of what it would be like if Logan didn't really have to fight anymore and just had the opportunity to grow old and sell animal pelts in Canada. Even though he aged really slowly, you can really see that time is catching up with him. He's not as fast as he used to be, one of his claws is broken, he's developed arthritis, he's just overall doubting his abilities and knows that even though he has a healing factor, he's gonna die pretty soon. Fast forward past Victor Creed's funeral and we see Logan travel to Japan and discover that the white ghost is none other than his brother John, and the two battle it out with John dying in Logan's arms. Give the story a read for yourself starting with Wolverine, the end, number one. Number seven. Jim Logan. Just like how there's a Spider-Man noir out there in the multiverse, there's also a Wolverine noir as well. From Earth 90,214, Jim Logan is an interesting case because unlike the other heroes in the Marvel noir universe, he seems to have two different personas. The first is a heavily scarred bootlegger known as Captain Jim, a serious drunk who was previously entangled with the con artist known as Jean Grey. He uses a rad looking set of portable claws which he wields with some deadly force. And then in his other incarnation within the noir reality, Logan is a private detective who's tasked with a mysterious and dangerous case that opens up the floodgates to his own dark past, who also seems to wield a set of claws for self-defense. Although, it's never really confirmed or denied if these two characters are in fact the same, or just two completely different people. Taking place in the Bowery of New York, Wolverine Noir takes Jim Logan on a dark, twisted adventure where he confronts demons of various kinds. There's also an air of mystery to Wolverine Noir, so we don't know who's who, but actions soon make facts very clear. Especially when characters like Rose O'Hara and Victor Creed enter the fold. These merciless individuals take Jim Logan on a roller coaster ride that concludes with several of his friends' deaths and Logan having to deal with their losses. Check out Jim for yourself, starting with 2009's Wolverine Noir, number one. Number six, Dakin. The son that Wolverine never knew he had, Akihiro, better known as Dakin, had a pretty dark life right from the get-go. His mother, Itsu, was gunned down by the Winter Soldier in an attempt to draw out her husband, Wolverine, which is a pretty terrible thing on its own, but to make matters worse, she was pregnant with Dakin at the time as well. Wolverine didn't know this at all, but thankfully the baby inherited his healing factors and a lot of his other powers, which kept it alive long enough for it to be extracted from the mother's womb. Raised with a hatred of his own father from then on, who he believed was responsible for his mother's death, Dakin set out to get his vengeance. Cocky and reckless, Dakin has powers pretty much identical to that of his father, the only real differences being the orientation of his claws since one comes out of his wrist, and that he also has the ability to manipulate people to do his bidding via pheromones. Dakin's quest for revenge has seen him adopt the alias of Dark Wolverine as part of Norman Osborn's Dark Avengers and even in the Dark X-Men. All in all, Wolverine has fathered many, many bastards over the years, but the only one that could really give him a run for his money is Dakin himself. There's a whole lot to this character's story, so check him out for yourself, starting with his first appearance in 2006's Wolverine Origins, number 5. Number 5, Phoenix Force Wolverine. Man, if there is one thing that Marvel enjoys more than making Wolverine old, it is granting someone the power of the Phoenix Force. Now with that in mind, it was only a matter of time before we'd run into an old, Phoenix Force wielding Logan at the heart of the universe. Logan of Earth 14,412 mirrors his mainstream counterpart's history up to the point where King Loki completely wiped out humankind to make his brother Thor suffer. Logan ended up dying but was chosen as the new host of the Phoenix Force and he began traveling the universe wiping out celestial bodies to aid the universe as it met its slow death due to entropy. After encountering a future Loki, Logan was convinced to go back in time to prevent Loki from ever gathering the Infinity Stones, which he gladly did because it gave Logan the opportunity to see his long dead friends just one last time. After Wolverine returns to the future, he comes in contact with an old friend, Thor, and much to Thor's surprise, Logan attacks him pretty much right on sight. The two battle it out before eventually putting aside their differences to team up and take down a much bigger threat. Doom. Old Man Phoenix and Thor then faced off against Doom, who reduced Logan to a nothing but a skeleton with the Spirit of Vengeance's Hellfire. But Logan resurrected and sacrificed himself to transfer the Phoenix Force into Mjolnir, which helped Thor defeat Doom once and for all. Give this Logan story a read for yourself, starting with his first appearance in 2017's Marvel Legacy, number one. Number four, Zombie Wolverine. <laughs> Do you see the smile? You know I'm smiling, right? It's because I get to talk about the Zombieverse again, my big 
favorite. With a history identical to his 616 counterpart before the spread of the zombie virus, Wolverine ends up getting infected by the zombie virus when both Captain America and Hawkeye bite him. Now, one would probably expect Wolverine's healing factor to prevent the virus from affecting him, but it actually shorts out due to the virus overwhelming his system and he turns into a zombie. Now, one thing I love about this universe is that the zombie virus is depicted just a little bit differently than normal. It doesn't destroy its victim's mental faculties, all it really does is make them have this insatiable need for human flesh. So as a result, Wolverine is just as witty as he was when he was still living. In a battle with the Silver Surfer, the zombie Wolverine succeeds in defeating Galactus' Herald, and he and the other zombies devour the Surfer. This grants Wolverine the Power Cosmic, which he utilizes later to devour Galactus himself. The Power Cosmic doesn't last very long though, as he eventually loses it and reverts back to a normal zombie. Now given the zombie Wolverine's body count, it is fair to say that he's the best at what he does as well. Y'all know I love this storyline, so if you haven't taken my word for it and checked it out already, please do so, starting with 2007's Marvel Zombies, Dead Days, number one. Number three, Helverine. This unnamed demon began his journey for revenge on Wolverine by partnering with Roger, aka the husband, who he convinced to join the Red Right Hand. Roger and the members of the Red Right Hand sacrificed a man and a woman in order to invoke the demon once again. However, the demon appeared in a form of a snake and killed the two human sacrifices, stating that in order to get his revenge, it would cost them just a little bit more than that. Eventually, Logan was lured into a van by Mystique, where the leader of the Red Right Hand used another human sacrifice to have Helverine take over Wolverine's body, trapping actual Wolverine's soul in hell in the process. Helverine then went on a bit of a killing spree, torturing and killing some of Wolverine's closest friends and family. On top of that, he also attempted to manipulate many people, including X-23, into joining his armies. However, he didn't seem to succeed, as they were all way too smart to believe that he was actually Logan. It took a ton of force and a lot of the X-Men to take him down, but eventually Helverine was cast back to hell, after a projection of Nightcrawler and what appeared to be a vivid memory of Jean Grey as the White Phoenix burned the demon from his mind. Making his first appearance in 2010's Wolverine Volume 4 Number 1, why not check out the story for yourself? Number 2, Weapon X. In the Age of Apocalypse universe, the X-Men were formed under slightly different circumstances than we're used to, with one of the biggest differences being how Wolverine, aka Weapon X, join the X-Men. Instead of being slowly integrated into the team by Professor X, Magneto instead recruited Wolverine onto his team and he tasked Jean Grey with stabilizing Wolverine's rage, which led to a bit of a romance forming between the two as they worked together on the X-Men. Another pretty big difference in this universe was how Wolverine fought with Cyclops. Now their initial confrontation wasn't actually over Jean Grey like you might expect, it's actually because Cyclops was working for Apocalypse. When they encountered each other in Apocalypse Citadel, they battled it out and Wolverine lost a hand while Cyclops lost an eye. He then capped that stump with a metal plate, which he later revealed to house his retractable claws. Fast forward a little bit and we see Weapon X turn from a noble warrior into a ruthless Weapon Omega after he learned that he had been betrayed and that his love Jean Grey had not perished, but had instead been abducted by Sinister. Not able to cope with this information, Logan allowed himself to be manipulated in order to save the planet, and the result of these manipulations was Weapon Omega. With this newfound power to rival that of Apocalypse, the strain proves too much for Wolverine and his mind completely broke turning him into the heir of the monster he had once fought to slay. Check out 2006's Wolverine Origins number 5 onwards if you want to know more. And number 1, Old Man Logan. So come on, how could we not put Old Man Logan at the top of this list? I mean, come on, he is one of the best iterations of the character out there, and he has had to deal with some pretty dark things in his many, many years of life. So 50 years ago, supervillains from around the globe banded together and executed a devastating coordinated attack taking the Earth's heroes by surprise, resulting in not only the end of the Age of Heroes, but also the United States is revealed to now be carved into territories ruled with an iron fist by various supervillains. We discover that the hero once known as Wolverine is one of the few to survive, and that he is now taking up a life as a simple farmer with his wife and two children, vowing to never resort to violence again. However, finances start to become a bit of an issue for Logan, and eventually he decides to accompany a blind Hawkeye across the country to deliver the last of the Super Soldier Serum all for the promise of a large payday. When they arrive at their destination, Hawkeye and Logan learn it's an ambush set up by the Red Skull. He attempts to take the serum from Logan, but despite his age, he manages to kill Red Skull using Cap's old shield. Logan then returns home shortly after, only to find that his family was slaughtered by the Hulk Gang, and in a massive rage, he murders the entire Hulk Gang leaving only Bruce Banner Jr. alive. In at number 10, Marvel Mangaverse. The Marvel Mangaverse is incredibly cool. Set on Earth 2301, it came to be when the Light Giver, a living energy force, created sentient life in the universe. Now in this reality, things for mutants and the X-Men are a 
tad different. Rather than Charles Xavier being responsible for forming the X-Men, Logan is. His claws are different too. He's got one set of claws on his left hand shaped like katanas and presumably made of adamantium, while on his right hand the claws are made of red energy, similar to Cyclops' optic beams. They kind of look like lightsabers. Many have noticed that aesthetically his outfit looks a whole lot like Vegeta's from Dragon Ball Z, which some believe may be an homage to the character considering this is, in fact, the manga-verse. Anyway, it's hinted to that the reason why one of Wolverine's claws is made of energy is because Cyclops, his brother in this reality, cost him his right hand, and he cost Cyclops one of his eyes. Moving on to number 9, Earth 92131. So this one might really hit that whole subjective nail right on the head. Anyone who grew up in the 90s, though, might fully agree that this version of Wolverine from Earth 92131, the X-Men animated series, should definitely be on this list. Now, to many X-Men fans, this was their introduction to the world of mutants, and in some cases, to Marvel. Voiced by Cathal J. Dodd, this Wolverine has become absolutely iconic, from his costume to his gruff, raspy voice. And this iteration of Logan was one of the most impactful depictions of the character, having largely influenced the character for years to come. Plus that theme music, how could you not love it? In at number 8, Marvel Noir. Marvel Noir is a gritty universe set in the 1930s on Earth 90214. Note that there are two alternates of Wolverine in the Marvel Noir universe, thanks to a continuity error that's never actually been revised. We're going to talk about both though, who are kind of one and the same, but also different. Yeah. In X-Men Noir, Mark of Cain, Wolverine is a bootlegger with a mysterious past who gets involved with Jean Grey, a manipulative grifter. He scratched out and scarred Cyclops' left eye, and he spends most of his time drunk. Then there's Jim Logan of Wolverine Noir, who is a private investigator with a gruesome upbringing in a Catholic family. So which one of these is technically canon? We might never know, but both are pretty awesome in their own respects. In at number 7, something a little more sinister, Hydra Wolverine. First appearing in Exiles issue 92, this version of Wolverine is, you guessed it, evil. Hailing from Earth 1720, this agent of Hydra also romantically got involved with Sue Storm in this reality, who is Madame Hydra. The two of them would rule this universe but got greedy, wanting more power, so set out to rule the entire multiverse. They would hop around conquering different Earths until an alternate version of Kitty Pride picked up on what they were doing and pursued them. This version of Logan met his untimely end though, and was killed by his own claws. Ouch. In at 6, Ultimate Wolverine. From the 1610 universe, James Lucky Jim Howlett has the same abilities as his 616 counterpart. And initially, rather than joining up wholeheartedly with the X-Men, he actually followed Magneto. He worked as a double agent with the intention of killing Charles Xavier. But then, he fell in love with Jean Grey, which caused him to switch sides and rebel against Magneto. He is a darker, more cynical, and violent version of Logan, much more morally ambiguous than his 616 counterpart. Kind of like the other alternates in the 1610 Ultimate universe. Universe. His journey with the X-Men of this Earth actually leads him down a positive path though, with him gradually regaining his humanity as the series move forward. In at 5, General James Howlett. General James Howlett from Earth 12025 is the Governor General of the Dominion of Canada. Yeah. And the Viceroy of Her Majesty's Expedition to Shangri-La. He's got gold claws. That's the color of the adamantium on his skeleton, which was a gift from Hercules. Now, some of you might actually know him better as the Gay Wolverine. This is the version of Logan who is romantically entangled with Hercules, with the two of them becoming known as this Earth's greatest heroes. They kept their relationship hidden from everyone, including Hercules' father, Zeus. Because, you know, you can't get it on with mortals. Hopefully Zeus just wasn't homophobic. When Zeus did find out, he banished them to Tartarus, where they were forced to fight damned souls for four years together, non-stop. Eventually, Howlett would be abducted by Savior, who was an evil alternate of Charles Xavier, who planned to use him to be a mutant power source. Luckily, Howlett would escape alongside the 616 Cyclops and joined up with a group of multi-dimensional X-Men, known as the Extreme X-Men. But fret not though, Hercules and Howlett would be reunited and work together yet again. Up next at 4, Mr. Murder Hands. Oh, come on, with a name like that, how could you not love him? Mr. Murder Hands first appeared in Spider-Gwen issue 20. He is a brutal bounty hunter who wears a cowboy hat and is all about getting his mark. He's also an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. to boot. While not much is known about him in comparison to some of the other alternates on our list, it is rumored that he once was a samurai who was cursed to walk the earth for every life he ended. Yikes. And at number 3, Age of Apocalypse. Hailing from Earth 295, better known as the Age of Apocalypse timeline, this Wolverine is referred to as Weapon X. Like some of our other variants on this list, he's lost one of his hands thanks to Cyclops. Except, there's no laser claw replacement here. Instead, he just uses the claws on his other hand. 
He's also married to Jean Grey in this reality. Yay. In later stories in this timeline, he would become Weapon Omega, a self-proclaimed heir of Apocalypse who was augmented by Celestials, becoming a villainous force that would eventually have to be stopped by Jean Grey herself. Up next, number two, Old Man Logan. Old Man Logan is James Howlett of Earth 807128 from the Old Man Logan series. Now his story begins on a fateful night when there was a supervillain uprising in which all the villains took down all of the heroes. Mysterio was forced to create an illusion, making Logan believe that the X-Mansion was filled with supervillains. Logan went on a rampage, killed all of them, and when the illusion was lifted, realized that he had slaughtered his fellow X-Men. He ran into the woods, stricken with grief. He tried to commit suicide, but failed. So he put his past as Wolverine behind him, referring to himself as merely Logan and refused to ever unleash his claws again. Fast forward to years later, Logan has settled down with a family living in Hulkland, which was formerly California, owned by the Hulk. After failing to pay rent, he is threatened by the Hulk gang, who is Hulk's inbred children. Hulk is, is not good in this reality whatsoever. And in order to pay off his debt, Logan takes on a job to escort an elderly Hawkeye across the wasteland. But by the end of the story, we learn that Hulk ordered for Logan's family to be killed anyway, and Logan seeks out revenge, ultimately murdering the insane Bruce Banner after the Hulk tries to eat him. Logan actually claws his way out from the inside out of Hulk's body, slaying him in the process. So, it's pretty gruesome but Bruce kind of deserved it. Finally, in our number one spot, we have Dark Claw. Wolverine combined with Batman? Hell yeah, that's pretty darn awesome. Enter Dark Claw. Dark Claw is a product of the Amalgam Universe, an alternate reality in which characters from the DC Universe and the Marvel Universe were merged together. His story is very much a combination of Logan's and Bruce Wayne's. After his parents were murdered, he discovers he has mutant powers and becomes Dark Claw, the world's greatest detective. And rather than all of his gadgets being bat-themed, they are claw-themed. The best part is, though, his number one foe is an amalgamation of the Joker and Sabretooth called Hyena, who is downright terrifying. <laughs> 